Hi everybody, my name is Andre. Welcome to Med School EU. In today's educational video, we are going to take a look at the kidney, the nephron anatomy, and in general the process of excretion and what it involves. Let's begin our discussion with the structure of the kidney and where it is located in the body. So uh, let's label some of the structures here uh, so we can decipher the anatomy that is being involved. So uh, the blue one, uh, the blue vein that's coming down here is called the vena cava. Now the vena cava, uh, there is inferior and superior vena cava. This would be the inferior vena cava because it's below the heart. The vena cava that's coming into the heart from the top is the superior vena cava. So this is inferior vena cava. Next we got the aorta that's coming down from the heart. It is uh, the artery that has oxygenated blood marked with that marked by red. Now the aorta is going to split up into renal artery and so the blood is going to go into the kidney, uh, into one kidney and the other kidney and it's going to uh, collect all of the metabolites that are coming out of the kidney into and they're going to drain into the vein and this vein is called the renal vein. Now of course this is our kidney. Now the fluids from the kidney, as we are going to see in the next couple of diagrams, is going to drain into the ureter. And the ureter is the tube that connects the kidney to the bladder. The bladder is where we store our urine until the bladder gets uh, full or almost full. Then uh, it's the, the fluids are going to be emptied or excreted out through the urethra. Now that we know the structure of the kidney and where it is located and a little bit about the anatomy of the body, we can now talk about the physiology of excretion. So let's define excretion. Excretion is the removal of metabolic waste. Now let's talk about what metabolic waste our body has to remove and the primary metabolic wastes are going to be carbon dioxide that is removed through our lungs through uh, the respiratory system we talked about earlier and the second uh, uh, metabolic waste that that is the main that we always have to get rid of is called urea and urea is the main nitrogenous ex excretory product of humans so urea is produced in the liver due to uh, excess uh, amino acids that we intake from the proteins or the breakdown of proteins. Now these excess amino acids are going to be transformed into urea and they will be transport, uh, transported from the liver to the kidneys in blood plasma. And the kidneys are then going to remove the urea from the blood and excrete it in a solution with water. So urea and water is going to make urine. Now let's talk about the process of deamination because it's closely tied in with how we produce and how we make urea. And deamination is the removal of an am amine group, so the NH2 group. So let's talk about the reaction that occurs in uh, the liver. So we're going to have an excess amino acid. This is an amino acid. And the liver is going to remove this amino group from the excess amino acid. And it's going to have two products. It's going to have a keto acid. So this is keto acid. And it's going to make ammonia. Now this remaining keto acid is going to be used by the body and other reactions and other pro processes. Uh, however, the ammonia is going to be excreted. But we, we must mention that ammonia is very soluble and it is very toxic. Now, since the ammonia is an extremely soluble and toxic substance, we cannot transport it in our blood because, of course, that is going to be toxic for our body and it's going to be uh, able to dissolve in the blood since the blood is primarily composed of water then uh, we would have to transform it into something that is more tolerable for the body. And from the liver, it's now going to combine 
with carbon dioxide in order to form urea. It will form urea and water. And now urea will be able to be transported because it is less soluble and less toxic. Now this compound of urea will be able to be transported from the liver to the kidneys safely in our blood and it will be able to exit the body or be excreted through the filtering of the kidney. And we're gonna see how that happens next and we'll see how that happens in more detail in our next video. But additionally, what I wanted to mention is that during this uh, urea cycle, we are also going to produce creatinine from excess creatine that uh, is uh, from the muscles. And we're also going to produce uric acid. And that is made from breakdown of purines, which are a type of nucleotides. We've discussed those in our previous uh, lecture. So keep in mind these two uh, wastes as well because they will be excreted uh, from our body as well. However, they're just not made in such large quantities as the urea, but uh, they are still toxic and this is something that will be excreted by our body and will be filtered out by the nephron and the kidneys as well. Now let's discuss the kidney anatomy. Now this wonderful picture was drawn by yours truly. And now we're gonna label the diagram here. So uh, on top, so the, the outer covering of the kidney is called the capsule. Now this layer right here is called the cortex. Moving further inside, we have the medulla. Now of course we've got our, uh, right here is gonna be our renal artery and the blue one would be the renal vein and moving further inwards we are going to have the pelvis and the pelvis is going to connect to the ureter and of course the ureter is going to take the urine that has been extracted from the blood and it's going to travel down to the bladder and then from the, the, the bladder is going to be uh, excreted through the urethra. Now if we zoom in further onto the kidney, we are going to have structures called nephron. So this is a nephron. And the nephron is composed of several parts, of course. Uh, we are going to have the glomerulus, that is the pooling of the blood within the kidney, so, uh, or, or within the um, nephron. So the pooling of the blood that comes in from the renal artery will be called the glomerulus. Now the structure that surrounds the glomerulus is called Bowman's capsule. And we begin by going down the tube. So this, the first part of the tube is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Now this uh, right here is gonna be the loop of Henle. And there, it contains two other important parts. This is gonna be the descending loop of Henle. And uh, this one right here is gonna be the ascending. So where are we at so far? We've got the uh, glomerulus, the blood is going to uh, filter into the Bowman's capsule. The filtrate is then going to travel along through the proximal convoluted tubule to the descending loop of Henle, from the descending down to the bottom, and then the ascending loop of Henle, and there are going to have different properties and different things going on there, which we will discuss in the next video. And finally, the last part of the, the tube is going to be the distal convoluted tubule. So all of the distal convoluted tubules are going to drain in one by one into this collecting duct. Finally, the collecting duct is going to drain into the pelvis. And so these are the structures that we have going on here as well. This, the yellow part right here, the yellow and the orange, is the pelvis. And the collecting ducts are going to be going and directing in there. Uh, now the top, so this side of the arrows, this dashed line that I have, is going to be the cortex. 
just to show you uh, an kind of an image t so you can visualize where these nephrons are located and there's there's thousands if not millions of nephrons within one single kidney that are located between the cortex and the bottom part is the medulla so it's located between cortex right here and the medulla there and of course in the end the collecting ducts will be touching the pelvis so they're going to drain in to the pelvis and there's going to be uh, nephrons all around the cortex and the medulla connection now this concludes our video on the anatomy and a little bit about physiology of the kidney and how excretion and deamination works. In the next video, we are going to take a look at the nephron more closely and more specifically, we will analyze the physiology of how the nephron works and how it is able to filter the blood and excrete our wastes.